This video is on the introduction to linear programming. So what we're going to cover are the terms, how to graph inequalities, find the feasible area, find the maximum value, graph to find the z value, and finding the slope. So the, those are six different things that we're going to go ahead and address. So the first part is the terms. What we call decision variables is going to be x subscript 1, x subscript 2, etc. For in this example in the video, we're only going to be addressing x subscript 1 and x subscript 2. Also, we will have is the objective function, and it will be some kind of equation, and you'll know it's an objective function because there will be an equal sign right there. Now, this objective function, the purpose is to find the maximum or the minimum value right there. And then we also have is the constraints or restrictions. And you'll know if it's a constraint or restriction by the inequality sign with some kind of value right there. To graph, when you see the x-axis, you'll use x1 as the variable to graph it. And for the y-axis, we will use x2 for the graphing purpose. So let's do an example. In this equation, we're asked to find the maximum and we're given z equals 3x1 plus 5x2. We know that this is an objective function because of the equal sign right there. This is gonna be the equation that we'll use later on to find the maximum value right there. Now I'm gonna change our x1 and x2 and change it to the x and y's that we know it uh, for graphing purpose. So in this first variable right here, which was previously an x1, I just kept it as my 3x. And then the second variable, we kept it as 5y instead of x2. Same thing on this right here. In the first column, all of those are our x's. And then in the second column will be our y's. And then the restriction down here also has been converted to x and y's right there. Now let's take our first equation, x is less than or equal to four, and we're gonna go ahead and graph this out. So to graph it out, we have an x and y axis right here, as we can see the x is right here, and then the y is right here. And to graph it, since this is x is less than or equal to four, I'm gonna to go to my x axis right here, and at four right here, it is gonna be a vertical line at four, and this equation is x is less than or equal to 4, so less than would have to be everything on the left-hand side, so that's the reason why all of this is shaded on the left-hand side. Now let's go to the second equation. So we have as 2y is less than or equal to 12. So we will use the y-axis right here, but before we do that, we have to convert this equation right here, so that way we can graph it out. So we're going to divide by 2 since the coefficient in front of the y is equal to 2 right there. It's 2 times y. And if we divided both sides by 2, we're going to get y is less than or equal to 6 right here. So graphing on the 6 right here will give us a horizontal line. And since it's y is less than 6, everything on the bottom portion of y is less than. So this is the reason why all this area is shaded right there. Let's look at our third equation. So it's 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 18. And again, similar to our second equation, we need to isolate it and have a y by itself. So we're going to get rid of this 3x right here by bringing it to the other side of the equal sign. And the way to bring it to the other side of the equal sign is subtracting because currently it is a positive 3x right there. So if we subtract, 3x on both sides, and then the similar to our second equation, divide by 2, since the coefficient right here is 2, that's going to give us something similar to this, where we have y is less than or equal to negative 3 over 2x plus, and then 9, because again, 18 divided by 2 gives us the 9 right there. This right here will help us to graph it onto the axis right here. So from here, we're going to go ahead and graph it. So on the 9 right here, this is the y-intercept. This is where it's going to go up here in the y-intercept. And that will be halfway because we have an 8 and a 10. So halfway between will give us a 9. The 2 on the bottom of that fraction will give us the run. And then the 3 on the 
top part of the fraction, the numerator, will give us the rise. So since the rise is negative 3, you're going to go down. So starting from 9 right here, I'm going to go ahead and go down 3. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, and run positive 2, which is then 1, 2. So that's going to be one of my final points right there. Let me do another one. Just to make sure, so we go down three again from that position. I'm going to go down three, so that's one, two, three, and then over two, one, two. So that's my final position. So with that, we're going to go ahead and draw a line connecting those three points right there, which will look something like this. And so since we have y is less than or equal to, the less than on the y-axis is everything on the bottom. So all of this green area is shaded. It's technically all of this right here, it, because this line will go on to infinity and beyond, it will go all of this. But because again, this last portion right here, which tells us I'm in the first quadrant, because x is greater than or equal to zero. So on the x-axis right here, greater than zero will be everything on the top portion. And then the y is greater than or equal to zero, Y line right here greater than or equal to zero would have to be on the right hand portion. So this tells me I'm in the first quadrant. Now in the first quadrant, I need to find out is where all three colors overlap each other. So you're going to have to visually see these layers. So we have the red layer on the bottom. We have the blue layer on top of it. And then we also have now is the third layer, which is the green layer. But where in the graph does the three layers overlap each other. So for example, if I go here in this area, this is just the red. There is no overlapping of any color besides the red. If I'm in this area right here, now I see it's two layers. I see a green layer on top and then the red layer on the bottom. If I go down in this area, this is gonna give me a layer of the blue and the red, right? So that's kind of the visual thing that we're looking for is where do all three layers lay on top of each other. So if we extend this blue line right here, right, if I extend it, because as we said, everything on the top will not give us a three layer. It will only give us two layers right here. In this area, you have to visually see that this is going to be the green layer on top. Then we have is the blue layer in the middle and then the red layer on the bottom right here. So the next portion is if we cut this line further in diagonally right here, this is going to be in this area still will give us the green layer on top, the blue layer in the middle, and the red layer on the bottom. Because if we cross over to this area right here, we only have two layers. I have is the blue layer on top and then the red layer on the bottom. But if I go over here, I only have one layer, which is the blue layer right there. Okay, where else does the three layer happen? we cut it off and extend our red line right here, okay, so visually see that red line. If I'm in this area right here, that gives me two layers because I have a green layer on top and then the blue layer on the bottom. But on this side, on the left-hand side, this area should give us our three layers, right? We should have the green on top, the blue in the middle, and then the red on the bottom. And again, it will probably cut off on the bottom as well down here. Um, so this is the shape that we want right there. So there's a lot of layer and coloring. So let's go ahead and clear that. And so you can see that this is your final shape that you have. It's that across, some diagonal, and then going down on that four right there. So this is just the first part. Once we know all the feasible area, we're going to take the next part using our objective function. We're going to find is the maximum value. But how do you find the maximum value? We need to find where the intersections of two lines happen and find the coordinates. So for example, in this part right here, there are two lines that intersect. There's a line that goes horizontally that intersects on the y-axis right here. So that's a point. There is a point right here. So it's basically the corners of your feasible area. That should be where the two intersections happen. And that's going to give us a point that you need right there. So this is what it looks like. I have is 0, 6 here. I have is 2, 6. So 2 right here and then 6 right here. Then I also have is a 4, 3 right here and a 4, 0 right here. So taking all of those four points, 
we're going to go ahead and put it back into our objective function right here. This is what we did right here and substitute it in and calculate it out. So I have is then the first number is going to represent is the x1 and then the second number represents x2. So as you can see, once we know how to graph it and then you can go back to the original equation, it should make sense. But if you didn't know how to put that connection, um, the graphing, you might get lost. And then also on this part, you may get lost of how to substitute it back in. So once I get here, I have a 0, 6. I substitute in my 0, 6. 0 times anything is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. So this gives me a value of 30. If I put in the 2 comma 6, 2 times 3 will give me 6. 5 times 6 gives me 30. If I add 30 plus the 6, gives me 36. Same thing here. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. 12 plus 15 gives us 27. And the last one is 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 0 is 0. So that gives me the 12 right there. So now again, we're looking for is the maximum value. So where is our maximum value? Maximum value happens at the corner of 2 comma 6, which gives us the value of 36. So that's one way how to find is the maximum value. So we're going to change it up and do a different method to find the maximum value. The second method is graphing method is what they called it to find the z value. You will select a point and substitute it into the z equation. So you can pick any point that is um, touching the corners of this right here. With the 2 comma 6, if we substitute it into this equation right here, 2 times 3 gives us 6, 5 times 6 gives us 30, gives us 36. So this is the equation, 36 equals 3x1 plus 5x2 is the graph of this line right here. And then same thing with this one here. They took the 0, 4. And if we put it back into that equation, that gives us 20. And so that's the graph with the 20 equals 3x plus 5. And then same thing with this one. If you take the 0, 2 coordinates and substitute into the z equation, it gives us 10. And that's going to give us this right here. Now, if you don't know how to graph each of these lines right here, you can always use a program called Desmos. So let me show you how to graph it using the... So to graph it on Desmos, you're going to go to desmos.com right here and go to the calculator part of this. And we go ahead and enter the equation so we can see all the shaded and things like that. So I have is the first equation, x is less than, equal to, and literally that's what I typed, e less than and then equal to and automatically need to put underneath it. Four, so it, it's shade now for me, it's that vertical line right there. The next equation, and you can change the color right here if you wanted to change the color as well. The next equation was 2y is less than or equal to 12. It'll know to take that and do the 6 like we did. We divided by 2 on both sides to give us the 6 right here, giving us the horizontal right there. The next one we have is 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 18. Give us that. And I believe if we put in the restriction that x is greater than or equal to 0, that will give us that first quadrant. And then same thing with the other one. It's going to be too dark right here, so I'm going to take that off right there. And then just look at is this first quadrant. So we'll just look at right here. Um, we can zoom it in or if we want to do that, but I think it may go too much in. So let's go into here and leave it here from our 10 up here and zeros down here. Then we want to put in are those three parallel lines. As I mentioned before, we can put in 36 is equal to 3x plus 5y, and that goes through that point of 2, 6, just like the graph. The next one is 20 equals 3x plus 5y, and it goes through that point of 0, 4, and then our last equation is 10 equals 3x plus 5y, and it'll go through that point of 0, 2 right there. So all of that will give us a nice graph what we need. So if you wanted to see and check your work, you're welcome to do it this way. 
So when you compare the two graphs from the Desmos to the original problem, you can see where the lines come from. And looking at the three lines right here, we can see that the lines are parallel to each other. So if the lines are parallel to each other, then they would have is the same slope. So how do you find the slope? You're gonna take the objective function and we're gonna go ahead and change it up into this y equals mx plus b, which is also known as the slope intercept form. So similar to our previous example, we have is the 3x1, which we will consider it as the 3x variable. And then the 5x2, we'll consider that as the 5y variable. Because that way we can then have is this form, the y equals mx plus b form. So in order to get rid of the 3x1, we need to subtract it on both sides. That's how we get this negative 3x1 plus the z. And then we want to isolate the x2 or the y by itself by dividing by five on all of these right here. So again, imagine this right here, the z right here, there is a coefficient of one in front of that. So the next step then will give us the negative three over five x one plus one over five z. And then we should be able to find then is the slope from here, um, the slope being our negative three over five because in front of our x1, remember the x1 is like the x we said. So anything in front of the x is the slope, the m right there will give us the slope right there. Let's wrap it up and go over what we found. So using the equations that were given of the objective function, which was the z right here, we had to find is the maximum value and we had to graph the three restrictions right here to find the feasible area once we found the feasible area, there were two ways to find the z maximum value. One way was to get the coordinates of each of the corners, substitute it into the feasible area to find the maximum value, or we can graph the line to find the z value. So which gives us these guys right here, we can graph that out and figure out where is the z value. So from here, we found that Z value is 36 for the maximum, and it will happen at the corner of 2, 6. And also our slope of this is equal to negative 3 over 5. Hopefully this video helped you with your basic skills and refreshing what you need for the linear programming.